Hello, welcome to the City Project, which is essentially a remake of Town, but better. Because why would we do a remake but worse? That sounds like a bad idea. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great intro. Uh, so this is the longer version of a different video where we talk more in depth about things that don't matter. Anyways, the first section of this video is the is is the weapon system. Yeah. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna stop doing the low energy thing because it hurts my brain. Uh, so, anyways, the weapon system uh, in town is actually horrible. Uh, so whenever you join the game, you know, you're just, you know, a new player, you're just going about, you know, well, probably yeah. getting shot to death several hundred times. Um, you know, <laughs> you probably want weapons, uh, but the only way you're going to be able to figure out how to get them is from stealing them from dead bodies. Problem, you can't make dead bodies because the only dead body there is you. <laughs> uh, that sentence made so much sense. <laughs> So, of course, you ask around, hey, how do I spawn weapons? Uh, you get, like, four answers being Alt F4, uh, and then you finally get one that's actually the answer, which is slash spawn, and then a space, and then the name of the weapon you want to spawn. Uh, now, I don't know about you, but having oh. to manually type out the word spawn and then an entire gun name just so I can shoot people in like the five seconds of passive mode that I get before I get shot to death. Uh, it's not a fun system hey, sometimes. Hey, let me ask you this question. How do you spawn in a weapon if you don't even know what weapons the game has? All right, yeah. So you might be wondering, what weapons does this game have? Uh, so you go to the game wiki because of course the game itself is too lazy to tell you. Uh, and then you're there, and then you realize, oh, hey, these, half of these are Game Pass only. Why? So then you spend money on Game Passes, and then you realize, oh, hey, what? <laughs> yeah. Oh, hey, what? Yeah, so of course half the guns in the wiki aren't actually spawnable, and the ones that are... Uh, they're just annoying to type every single time. So now that you've gone to a completely external website just to spawn a weapon, which is the main function of the game, uh, now you gotta figure out attachments! Yay! Uh, so of course it doesn't tell you how to add attachments to the weapon automatically. <laughs> it took me three months to find out how to spawn in the green laser pointer. Yep, uh, so... First off, you can't just put spawn item, which is what everyone tells you to do. Uh, sorry, blah, blah. You can't just put, wait, what was it? Spawn weapon or spawn item for like only spawn guns? spawn item, I believe. Yeah, so of course you can't use spawn item for these attachments. No, 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 that's only for guns. So uh, you use the spawn function. Max, can you stop watching video so loudly? I'm trying to do video. But then you're never getting on. Anyways, uh, so... That's, that's a bomb. Well, anyways, you, you're trying to, you know, you, you gotta summon attachments for your weapon. So, uh, you go through the wiki, you find the name of some, because, of course, they're also not in the game. And then you use the spawn item command that you used for the guns. And then you realize, oh, hey, it, it doesn't work. Turns out you have to do a completely separate function for some reason. Uh, so you use the spawn command, because spawn is different than spawn item, how? Um... Or you could, you know, just use exclamation S. Oh wait, nobody told you that. Yeah, so you, you use either of those. Uh, and then, of course, later down the line, you figure out that you could just use spawn and then the weapon name as well as spawn item and then the weapon name. Um, I hope you're following this, because I sure am. Uh, joke is that I'm not, it this sucks. Uh, so yeah, now you figure out how to add attachments, and now the only in-game UI that exists is for the attachment system. And it sucks. Yep. It just does. So yeah, you add all the attach- <sighs> So you add all the attachments, and then, uh, 
You're finally ready to go, uh, except it took you 20 minutes to do this and you've been shot to death. Uh, so now you have to add a Google document full of strings of commands so you are able to copy and paste them before you get shot to death. Uh, so yeah, th that's the fun cycle of trying to make loadouts in town. Hey, wait, did you uh, the solution? Your command properly? Oh yeah, you also have to make sure that it doesn't break half the time that you try and do it because of one misspelling. Oh, stupid goddamn space. Yeah. Okay, so now that you've figured that out, uh... You, you've realized, oh hey, there's a remake of this game out now. I wonder if that has a better system. Spoilers. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so in our game, we have the simple solution of having pre-made loadouts. So it will have eight bun. It'll have nine loadouts. Uh, three of them will be in the spawn menu, where you can just switch between them very quickly before launching. And then the other six, you can switch between by pressing one button, and then pressing the loadout. You see how much simpler that is, compared to the 20 minutes that it takes to do the other thing? But these yeah. are obviously pre-made, because it can't guess what you want to do in the game automatically. But you can edit these to be whatever you want. Uh, so in the editor, uh, it will have a few tabs. Uh, one for the primary weapon, one for the secondary weapon, one for the attachments. Uh, sorry, no, that's not gonna be. Too, no, okay, never mind. Okay, so one for the primary weapon, one for the secondary weapon, one for the tactical, one for the lethal, one for the melee, and then one for the armor. All of those things are things you can summon in the in town. But you all have to do mainly separate commands that make no sense for all of them. And honestly, I have been playing town for over a year now, and I still don't know all the commands. This game just has them all in one menu, and it's all in the same game. You don't have to look at a wiki to find them all. Uh, but yeah, you can go through all the things. You can get yourself tacticals, of which they're, you know, they're all like your drones, your flashbangs, uh, just all of like the tools that are there to uh, help you uh, win a like a weapon duel that don't directly damage the other opponent. Um, and then we have all the lethals, which of course are the ones that do directly damage the opponents, like grenades, claymores, uh, like spike traps, things like that. Um, we have all the melee weapons, which we'll hopefully be using a less buggy melee registration because the melee registration in town oh, is cool. abysmal. Ugh. Man, I love swinging and, uh, somebody but not hitting them. Your, your weapon will go straight through them, but because you were too close to them, because that makes sense for a melee weapon, uh, it just will deal no damage. Yeah, it also doesn't deal damage if they're in a placed seat item, which makes absolutely no sense. Yes, yeah, so, that, so that's how you make your loadouts. Of course, you do all that. You can change the name of the loadout just so you know uh, you can differentiate through all of them really quickly. It'll also have icons of all the items you have in the loadout in the main menu, so you don't have to edit it just to see what you have. Uh, so it, it's just an easier system that lets you see everything really clearly on one menu instead of having to copy and paste a long string of nonsense to get your weapons after you've entered the match and are susceptible to getting shot to death. Yeah. Uh, a few more tidbits is uh, you can activate passive mode in the main menu now before you spawn in because having to do a command, uh, like <laughs> frantically typing it before you get shot in the head is, you know, uh, it's scary. And then we also have something that lets you uh, pick a random loadout automatically. You can also have the loadout itself be randomized for you, so you just can have fun doing the most random loadout that has no synergy at all. Um, a final tidbit is, uh, since there will be a spawn menu now, uh, there is going to be a big giant play button because that way if you want to keep the spirit of the old game where you just spawn in immediately 
you just click once in the middle of your screen and then you're back into the game instantly. There's no delay. It's one more click, which is probably going to be a little bit more annoying, but because of the amount of problems it fixes, overall, I think it will be a worth, uh, worthwhile change. Anyways, now that I've ranted for way too long about the, uh, the weapon system, uh, let's go to the build mode. Okay, build mode. So. Let's start off with the simple mode. The simple mode is a version that we're going to be calling block mode in game. It's going to be a selection menu that is selected for players that don't exactly know how to use a build mode or are on a smaller device, for instance, like mobile or console. And with that comes a simpler UI and it blocks the snap to a grid. Sort of like build a boat, or if you don't know what that is, Minecraft. It's pretty much any sandbox game because sandbox games are typically very simple. The ones that are more sophisticated are typically like a like a world editor or something. But, anyway. And with this block mode comes the advanced mode. The advanced mode. The advanced mode is the mode that is more difficult and is designed around the one that's in town. But the one we're gonna have is better. Anyway, the advanced mode will have a more advanced UI and it won't have blocks to snap to, I mean it will have blocks to snap to a grid, but you can resize them to however size you want and angle them to however you want. You can size them to really tiny and angle them and change their uh, type and change their color and all that. The type and color thing is what you can do in the basic mode, but along with the advanced mode comes the ability to make prop walls. Walls that can break away. So, like, instance, if you want a concrete wall that will break if you throw a grenade at it or hit it with a vehicle, it will. It'll do that. It'll break. If you want glass that breaks when it gets hit, you have that too. If you want wood that breaks if it gets hit, you have that too. You basically have anything that would physically break in like a movie or something. Breaks. You can make a version of that will break. In either mode, you can place... You have the ability to place a door or a window that is interactable... Inter that you can interact with like one of the buildings that is placed on the map. So you can make them open or close. You can even get a version that locks, and you like give some, and you have like somebody on like a white list that allows that they're allowed to open and close it, but other players are not, because prop blocking doesn't matter on your own plot. It did on the original game, and outside of both of the modes, you can just have presets. There's there's presets, I'm not exactly sure how many we're going to have, but we will have certain presets, like, if you wanted to, like, build an entire other store, you can. It's going to be relatively empty, so you can do whatever you want to it, but it's going to be there. It's going to have a door. It may not be a lockable one, but it's going to have it. And, yeah. Uh... Speaking of lock, uh, speaking of buildings on the map, uh, Keith map. Anyways, this section is a little shorter because there isn't too much to the map in the current phase of the game because map is mainly something where we make it as we go. We have like plans, but you know they're not as in depth for like you know the build mode or the weapon system. 
Um, so, uh, in the map we have, like, uh, essentially there's, like, four major sections of the map. There's, like, the, there's a really big section around a uh, gas station, which is going to be very similar to the gas station from the first game, because that was an iconic location. We have the roundabout that is going around the Ikea, which we will get to in a minute. Uh, and then we have a long straightaway with the greenhouse and some other building that we will place in due time. And then we have one final roundabout in the last corner that goes around a billboard and another building which we have not placed. But is planned to be a sc uh, scaled replica of Daventhoff, so yeah. that's cool. My house. Me. Just because you don't live in a house that you could easily recreate within the confines of the... I mean, I could. It would just be way too big for the game. Exactly. That's what I mean. And just not fun to play in, because every single ha like unit would be the exact same. Yeah. Anyways. Mm. Yeah, go be back to you what you were doing. Anyways, uh... What else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, uh, so the style of the map is mainly similar to, you know, Towns, which was based off of the default <laughs> city pack in Roblox Studio. Which is what these Minus games are made of. school, because obvious. So... I essentially um, manually made recreations of the roads from uh, the uh, Roblox default pack. It looked a little higher quality because uh, while the uh, while the roads in the old pack still look fine, they could always look better. So, uh, it's also a larger layout than town, so it'll be a, it'll basically have more room for. The large amount of players because a big problem in town was that everything always felt cramped when everyone had their plots loaded so having a little more space to do things will be nice but not to mention once honestly everybody, not to mention once everybody had their plots loaded there it felt like the entire city was barren because everybody was just inside of their plot yeah rather than around the map anyway so having all the plots where most players will spread out a bit more will encourage people actually going around the map more because uh, camping in your own plot for like five hours uh, will not be as fun because you won't be able to see as many uh, other, like other people's plots. So it will encourage you know to actually explore other people's places. So bro, that. Anyways, uh, okay. Yeah, and the final thing I'll talk about is the IKEA specifically, because it's probably going to be the most out of place building, uh, but it's there for a reason. Uh, so when you enter the IKEA, it will give you a pop up asking you if you want to actually enter the IKEA, and then once you do so, uh, you will be teleported to a PvP arena themed after IKEA. It will basically be a large nine by nine grid, but the middle is. Like, you know, the middle is, like, four times larger than any other square. So that means the side squares, since it's a 9x9, nine nine, so... Uh, the, the side squares on all the sides will be, like, twice as long. Just to accommodate the middle being larger. And then the corners will be the smallest, because they're just going to be this... Like, they're going to be a quarter of the size of the middle. So, that's, like, the main sections of it. But the corners themselves will mainly be spawn points, so they're going to be uh, completely... Uh, they're, they're still going to be randomized, like the other sections will be. But they will not be... Like, they will not have movable items, because then you can move items to trap players. Uh, speaking of moving items, that is a main mechanic of this area. As you cannot make plots or build, which is the spirit of the PvP arena, because some people just want to fight people in the engine and not actually build stuff, because sometimes having like entering the fifth base in a row where it's just a giant cube of neon is not that fun so um you will be able to push around objects as like a sort of very limited build mode where like you can push boxes around uh just to, like make cover and stuff like that 
uh, just a, a little bit of interaction in the arena, uh, in the arena that allows it to be far more dynamic. Yeah, as I was saying earlier, every single section other than- well, actually, yeah, every single section will be randomized from a few different, uh, like, units that can be there. Uh, that will have, like, different sections of an Ikea to battle through, but they'll, of course, be edited to, you know, be fun to play in. So, you'll, like, uh, it, so, like, one round, it will have, like, a giant warehouse section in the middle, and then the next round, it will be, like, um... It will be like a deli area, or no, not a deli area. Uh, it will be like the cafeteria area that is uh, in most IKEAs. So, food court. That's what I was thinking. So it will be the food court in uh, most IKEAs as well. Okay, so with the very absent transition, let's go to vehicles. So with vehicles, last time I was talking about how they sucked. Um, they can't control very well, and they can't, uh, crap, I already forgot what I was talking about, what I talked about last time. Anyway, uh, it basically it's just the same thing, uh, whatever I said last time goes again, but, um, we're gonna be adding more vehicles, so... One vehicle we are going to be having is, well, I guess not one, but the vehicles we will have is we're going to have a motorcycle, a war truck, a jeep, a unicycle, and a clown car. I'm not exactly sure what some of these go with, but, um, I guess the motorcycle is just a motorcycle? I don't know, it doesn't have to be, a sp you don't have to say the specific model. I know, I'm just like, what does it do, cause... It's a motorcycle, it'll probably be faster, but have worse turning. Yeah. Faster, but it can't turn very well. Um, the war truck also is likely be, like, you get to fall off them, I guess, I don't know. Yeah, the war truck is likely going to be a bigger, heavier arm vehicle that can't take as, that takes less damage faster, and probably has some sort of weapon of... Weapon on top of it, the Jeep is gonna be high mobility, pretty quick turning. It can, I guess, is a, has a little bit of a uh, grip yeah. Problem. It'll have all of that, but it will be far more open because it's gonna yeah. be a wireframe top, so it's it'll be, be way easier to shoot someone be out of that Jeep. So it's gonna just have uh, no top, pretty much gonna have the freaking fabric top and a fold down window so you can like fold down the front window and shoot from it if you want to or you could just you know break the glass like everybody else does um the unicycle i have no idea what the unicycle is going to be useful for it's a it's a unicycle and the clown car again i don't know what that's going to be useful for other than people in vehicle so talk about the tank that you're going to get if you uh like oh yeah the beta. so Another thing is, is that we decided with our beta, we're going to be giving people incentive to play it during beta, is they are going to get a tank. What kind of tank? I don't know yet. But anyway, this tank is going to be one of the heavier armored vehicles. Really strong. It can't really take any damage from anywhere else other than by shooting it in the back. Um, most anything can damage it. Grenades will be useful for it. Um, the sticky grenade will be useful for it, definitely. The anti-vehicle weapons will be useful for it, that's what they're meant to do. But with the tank itself, when you're driving it, you get a... So, you're probably thinking, a tank in a game like that, that's pretty overpowered. Because you got that gun on top, it deals a whole bunch of damage. Well, you will have that one. But, you don't get to use it. You get to use a machine gun. It's an anti-infantry machine gun, so it doesn't really deal that much damage to another vehicle. And then, that's just you if you're just driving it. But you can get out of the driver seat and get into the turret seat and actually use the turret, which has the bigger gun on it. But, you could also just call up a friend and have them pilot the turret for you. Like, 
then you got the boom and the move. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, with the boom and move, I think I'm gonna boom and move out of this video.